Good evening. Good evening. Yes, good evening. Okay. <laughs> so welcome to this uh, series of when life gives you lemon series. And uh, today's topic we are talking about embracing uh, suffering. I think this topic is something that is quite close to us. We listen to suffering every time we heard from our friends when they share their condition, sometimes they say that or they have broken relationship and such, we hear from them suffering. We see suffering. We see sufferings from the news, especially these days when we see a lot of bombing happening, killing, shooting. We see that there are a lot of sufferings. And we ourselves, we experience suffering. What? Monday Blue? <laughs> I think it's something that is close to us. Monday Blue, even though it's a small suffering, it's still suffering. <laughs> right? Broken relationship, when our work gets very tough, and all of these things. So, when it happens to us, about suffering, when we experience suffering, we started to question why there is suffering in this world and how are we going to respond to suffering. But today, because of the limited time of the teaching session, I will only touch on the how shall we respond to the suffering, not talking about why. Because I think people from all ages have tried to define what is suffering, why there is suffering, but even up until now, I think there is no much uh, answer on that that can satisfy us. But instead, we need to ask ourselves how shall we respond to suffering? And the suffering that I will mention, I will put the scope a little bit narrow, it will be about suffering that we cannot avoid. For example, cannot get job. Trying <laughs> 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 to find job, right? Trying to find job. Uh, really trying. But there are there times when you, you will experience the suffering that you need to get uh, to, to find a job. So that is the suffering that you cannot avoid. Or uh, when you work and you... <laughs> so this teaching is for you. <laughs> or something like that. So it's more about suffering that we cannot avoid. Okay? So we have that scope. So when we share our, our suffering to people, we got this, especially to Christian, we got this common three response. One thing is that just be grateful, count your blessings. Uh, as you see, your blessings are more than your little suffering. The second common response that we receive is that uh, don't worry, at the end of it, everything will be good. And the third common response that we get is that just offer up to Jesus. <laughs> Some of the common response, and even though these responses are actually very biblical, have a very strong biblical approach, but when we heard about that, a lot of times we feel like we, are, we want to punch the person on the face <laughs> because we felt that there is something that uh, we will say that oh, I just want you to share, you please just listen, and I don't want to get any advice. Why? Why there is this? Uh, even though we see that these three responses are actually uh, very uh, biblical. But we still find ourselves struggle to do this three response. So this teaching will also help us to understand more about that. So when we are unsure of what we should do, how do we start? We start from the Bible. So I would like to start this with a passage in the Bible where there are three people enduring the same suffering, yet they have different response. So it is from Luke. Uh, chapter 33, uh, first, actually, a little bit, uh, I, I did not put full there, uh, first 32 to 34 and 39 to 43. So I will read, so let us quieten down our hearts. Two other men, both of them criminals, were also led out to be put to death with Jesus. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there and the two criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Forgive them, Father. They don't know what they are doing. One of the criminals hanging there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other one, however, rebuked him, saying, 
Don't you fear God? You receive the same sentence he did. Ours, however, is only right because we are getting what we deserve for what we did. But he has done no wrong. And he said to Jesus, Remember me, Jesus, when you come as king. Jesus said to him, I promise you that today you will be in paradise with me. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to Lord Jesus Christ. So, we see that they are both, I mean, all of them are enduring the same suffering. Three of them are crucified, but we see different responses. And I see this, as I reflect on this passage, I see that these are the three stages of uh, when we try to respond to suffering. And the first one, let's start with the first thief, is retaliation. So this thief saying that, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and save us. He was crucified, he was there on the cross, he cannot do anything. He tried to avoid it, he tried to retaliate, but he cannot. So what he do is that he tried to distract himself by mocking other people, by giving uh, aggressive comment, by giving a sarcastic remarks towards Jesus. So I think this is uh, a very common response uh, when we first encounter suffering, that we want to retaliate, we want to avoid the suffering. And when we are when we see that we cannot avoid the suffering, we started to distract ourselves. How do we distract ourselves? We started to, for me, I will read manga, I will eat delicious food, or not for me, watching Korean drama, uh, watching anime, I'm not doing that. Right? <laughs> uh, watching whatever things, or try to surf Facebook, we uh, go for holiday, or we just go for shopping or uh, gossiping about other people. We try every, every things to distract ourselves. We get, uh, I get an example of uh, working. When we suffering in, work, uh, in our work, Saturday and Sunday, we try to escape and distract ourselves. But no matter how much food that we eat, or no matter how much anime that we watch, no matter how much Korean drama that we watch, when it comes to Monday, we are still unprepared of the suffering. We still feel very bad. It still hits very hard for us. So what is wrong? If it, it is something, uh, a rest that we, we do efficiently, it's supposed to energize us. When it's Monday, it's supposed to, okay, let's uh, solve all the issue. But we find ourselves dragging ourselves to work. So what is wrong with, uh, with distracting ourselves? Because that does not solve our suffering. When we distract ourselves, we just avoid of encountering this suffering head on. We need to take our time to encounter this suffering, to really take our time to listen to ourselves. To really listen to ourselves. I myself personally, when, I, when it is Sunday, I will go back home Normally, I will uh, arrive at home around 10.30 p.m., but for Sunday, I will arrive 10 p.m. 30 minutes for prayer and 30 minutes to really think what will I face on Monday. Why did I suffer on Monday? And a lot of times it comes to me, oh, because this project that keeps on delaying, because I keep on procrastinating, then I ask, why do I procrastinate? Because it turns out that this person that I need to ask permission to is a quite difficult person. So now I know what are the problems. And therefore, that I can prepare myself to encounter these people. I can grow my virtue of patience to encounter these people. I can prepare emotionally to encounter these people and to really uh, face my suffering. And we see this in the second tip. Is the repentant thief. The repentant thief response is that we have been condemned justly for the sentence we received correspond to our crimes. When he was hanging on the cross, he started to think to himself, why, why am I on the cross? And he started to think, listen to himself, and he found out that it's because of his crimes. And therefore he can say this one. And therefore he does not have the response like the first thief, mocking Jesus. 
because he knows that he is condemned justly. So the first thing of this repentant thief is that he listened to himself. And the second thing is that he finds meaning from his suffering because he knows that his suffering is for redemption of his criminals, his crimes. So, meaning is something that is very important for us to be able to endure our suffering. I like this uh, illustration of Simpsons. So, uh, there is one story, uh, he actually already quit his job, but he needs to get back to the same job in the nuclear plant. And uh, because he needs money for his, uh, his daughter. So, when he comes to that, the boss put a sign for him, don't forget you are here forever. Because he has quit the job, but eventually he needs to come back because of the money. So the boss reminds him, you are here forever. What Simpson did with this size is that he put the photo of his little daughter all near this side. And it says, do it for her. So he finds meaning in the suffering of the work. So if you don't want to suffer from the work, find a child. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> yes. yes. You need to find meaning. You need to find meaning that that makes you able to endure your suffering. And the third point from the repentative is that he asks grace from God, uh, from Jesus, and he asked it with trust that Jesus can give him. He said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Because he has faith that Jesus is God, and therefore he can say this word when you come into your kingdom. Because no one has kingdom after he has died. Only God has the kingdom after even after life. So, the repentant thief, he finds meaning in the suffering and he asks grace from Jesus, from God, with the disposition of trust there. But a lot of times, when we say that we want to find meanings in our sufferings, a lot of times we might not be able to find meaning. If suddenly you wake up and suddenly you, you are diagnosed with cancer, how can you find a meaning from that? You cannot. At least for the few weeks, you might not be able to find the meaning for that. So, what should we do if we cannot find the meaning? As we see, meaning is something that is important. I would like to, as an engineer, when there is a problem, we propose a solution. So I would like to propose a solution. And that solution is called, called consoling the heart of Jesus. And that will become our meaning. I will, I will expand this a little bit with a sidetrack from the stories of the uh, three people crucified uh, to the uh, consoling the hearts of Jesus. So the model that I want to, uh, to put here is the Simon of Cyrene. Suffering comes suddenly to him. He suddenly needs to carry the Jesus cross. It is heavy. It is something that gives him suffering. But then when he looks into Jesus' eyes, he knows how relieved Jesus was because of his help. When he sees into Jesus' eyes, he saw how has he consoled the heart of Jesus. And this is, will be our model when we say that we want to console the heart of Jesus. This consoling the heart of Jesus actually based on the uh, teaching of uh, Father Michael Gately. So Adi has shared his book, I will share my book list. <laughs> we are not paid. <laughs> so it's a program called Consoling the Heart of Jesus by Father Michael Gately. So he actually combined the three teachings, the three great teachings of Sacred Heart of Jesus, Divine Mercy, and the story of a soul uh, by St. Therese of Lisieux. So we start by the oldest one, which is the Sacred Heart of Jesus that happened on the 17th century. So at that time, there is this, uh, at that time it's just after uh, the Protestant Reformation. So the Protestant declaring uh, grace only, salvation by grace only, salvation by grace only. 
while the Catholic Church saying that uh, salvation by uh, grace and work, grace and work, grace and work. But then because the grace are similar, so the tendency is to emphasize the one that is not similar. So it becomes to emphasize on the work, work and work. These are the things that the Catholic Church start to emphasize. It gets so bad that there is this heresy uh, called Jansenism. It's from the founder, Jensen, the name is Jensen. So Jensen, actually he said that when you approach the Eucharist, when you come and visit the Eucharist, you need to, uh, to be worthy. Nothing wrong with that. But then he said, you need to work your salvation to be holy, and then you can receive your, the Eucharist. You can just receive Jesus after you work your salvation. And it gets so bad to the point that one day he disallowed everyone in the church to receive Eucharist because he felt that everyone has not done his, their part to become holy. And that breaks Jesus' heart because Jesus comes to call the sinners. Jesus comes so that uh, the sinners might have life. And Jesus cannot take it to the point that he revealed himself to this sister, Sister Mary Margaret Alacom. So Sister Mary Margaret see Jesus with his heart and Jesus said, Behold this heart that loves so much yet so little love. Why is so little love? He explained in the next slides. <laughs> All my eager efforts for their welfare meet with nothing but coldness and dislikes. Do me the kindness then, you at least of making up all their ingratitude as far as you can. Because the people start to see Eucharist as something that is burdened. When they need to receive Eucharist, they have all, all of the least that they need to do so that they are holy. They started to reject the grace of God because of this Jansenism. Because they felt that they are unworthy. And that pains Jesus so much. So how do we console the heart of Jesus that is so little love? Because of the ingratitude, because of the distrust, because of the rejection? It is by accepting His grace. It is very simple. Because people have rejected the grace of Jesus, you can console the heart of Jesus by accepting the grace. And it is being uh, summarized very, uh, very good in the, uh, when Jesus uh, said this to the St. Faustina of Kowalska from his diary. Jesus said, My heart also flows with great mercy for souls and especially for poor sinners, which explains uh, just now. I desire to bestow my graces upon souls, but they do not want to accept them because of the Jansenism, because of the distrust. You at least come to me as often as possible and take these graces that they do not want to accept. In this way, you will console me. And actually, it's very fun, right? You just ask God that, God, the grace that other people have rejected, just give it to me. And you give it and you console the heart of Jesus already only by asking His grace. And this is just like the repentant thief. Because, we come back again to the repentant thief. Because the repentant thief, he consoles the heart of Jesus when he asks that he shall be, uh, that Jesus remembers him when he comes to his kingdom. It is just like the thief. But he, we need to ask with trust. We need to ask with trust that we will get this grace and this grace will help us to sustain, to endure our suffering. When we trust God, the grace of God will flow. Just like Mother Mary, Mother Mary said, Be it unto me according to your will. When she put the trust in God, the, the floodgates of heaven, the grace just fall down to the point that she conceived Jesus only by trusting in God's grace. And I think a lot of times we, 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 we encounter this Jansenism in our lives. A lot of times we felt that when we are suffering, we need God's help, but we are unworthy to come with God. 
or we have not done enough service for God and therefore we cannot ask God to help us therefore we feel that we are God abandoned by God or a lot of times even we put the blame to God and then that breaks Jesus' heart when we encounter suffering choose to ask the grace and when we ask the grace with full confidence that God will give us the grace we will receive it and we will console the hearts of Jesus and it will be our meaning when we need to endure our suffering when nothing else gives us meaning we can put the meaning that our suffering is to console the heart of Jesus I think most of you might have seen uh, these pictures it's about uh, sister Cecilia so she was diagnosed with cancer but uh, and then she needs to undergo a lot of painful treatment but we can see the face is very joyful she's very joyful how can it be i believe that in her suffering she finds meaning she is able to trust jesus in her suffering and therefore she's joyful and because of his her trust she consoled the heart And this way of, if we see from this sister Cecilia, I think most of us will think she will become same soon because of her disposition with joy, embracing the suffering. And I think by consoling the heart of Jesus, we can see that that is also the path of the sainthood, the path of the sainthood. Saint Therese of Lisieux says uh, in, in her uh, diary, Story of Soul, that he need, she needs to write, she put that God is the, the God of justice. So a lot of saints, a lot of great saints, will normally ask God, God, give me your anger, give me your wrath for this specific person, transfer it to me, and I will bear it for the salvation of that soul. Some great saints do that. And God willingly give that anger to the saints and the saints grow in virtue. So, uh, Saint Therese of Lisieux has the desire to become saint. But when she uh, contemplates on these ways, this approach to become saint, she, she is not at all attracted to this way. But she believed that if God has given her the grace, the desire, uh, the desire to become saint, God will fulfill it. And therefore, as he tried to find a way, a new way to become saint, and she found, uh, she write these things. If thy justice must need to be satisfied, just like the uh, the great saint satisfied about justice, how much more must thy merciful love desire to inflame so? Let me be that happy victim. So in short, uh, not short, in long, she's, <laughs> she's saying that if. God is willing to give the justice to other people for the forgiveness of sins and for the uh, for the growing in virtue. How much more God of the mercy will give the grace that has been rejected to us that asking for that. And therefore, Saint Therese always say uh, herself to be the victim of love because she received the rejected love of God. And this is the way of the little souls. Now we don't need to, if we want to become saints, we don't need to ask God, God gives us mortification. Uh, then you start to weep yourself and all these things. You don't need to do that. You can choose the little way for the little souls, just like Saint Therese of Lisieux. You can just ask God, your merciful love that has been rejected by others, give it to me. And I think I can relate this uh, because a lot of times when I went back to Indonesia, my mother will be very happy. Because normally she she likes to cook. Uh, she normally cooks rendang. When she cooks rendang, there are a lot of effort that she needs to do. But when she give it to my brother and sister, my brother and sister is just like, ah, okay, it feels, it tastes okay. Uh, but when I come back, I will eat the rendang of my brothers and my sisters, and I will be very satisfied. I will be very grateful to my mother. And I'm and my mother also happy. Why she is happy? Because she has done a lot of effort so that she can cook that rendang. And when 
I received the rejected rendang from my brothers and sisters and I appreciate it, she's also happy. I think that is also uh, what happens with the grace that God wanted to give to everyone, but a lot of people reject it. So for me, I will pray to God every morning. I will say, God, Jesus, you say, you have said that behold this heart that loves so much yet so little love. And Lord Jesus, I want to console your heart. So I, I ask for the grace that has been rejected for others. Give it to me. I pray that every day. And that actually gives a lot of changes in my life. Later on, I will share more about that. So this is about the consoling uh, about the second uh, the second people the rep repentant thief is that he finds meaning and he asks for the grace and for us that cannot find meaning or even if we can find meaning we can add more meaning to console the heart of Jesus which is asking for the grace of God that is being rejected uh, give it to us that we ask with a great trust and the third one. The third person which is Jesus himself. Jesus does not retaliate. Jesus does not only endure suffering, but Jesus embraced suffering. And his response was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus take the suffering upon himself for the sake of other people. And therefore, uh, suffering, we cannot eliminate suffering, definitely. But do not waste suffering. Suffering, we can use suffering, we can choose to use suffering for a greater good. At the first stage, at the first people, we see that when we listen to our suffering, we know more about ourselves, we know what are the things that we need to grow, the virtue that we need to grow. The second, People, the second stage, we realize that when we embrace, uh, when we uh, receive suffering, we can use it to deepen our relationship with God. And the third one is that we can use the suffering for intention of others, for other people's salvation. And this is exactly the message of the Divine Mercy. If you have ever prayed the chaplet of the Divine Mercy, you will pray this uh, prayer and for every bit. for the sake of your sorrowful passion have mercy on us and the whole world the first element of this is that the, for, for the sake of your sorrowful passion when we have our suffering and we want to offer it up to God don't just offer it up combine it, unite it with Jesus' suffering say that I unite my suffering for this, uh, with, with Jesus' passion and I give it to you because our suffering in the eyes of God might, might be just like a five cents on me but when we see when Jesus uh, God sees Jesus suffering it is like a box full of diamonds and therefore when God sees that he sees it pleasing because it is a full box of diamonds plus our five cents but it is still something that is very valuable so God is pleased when we unite our suffering with Jesus. And the second element on this is that have mercy on us and the whole world. We need to trust in God because of the suffering of Jesus. We can make boldly our requests, not only for ourselves, but for the whole world. And I share again, um, from for my experience, when I learned about this consoling the heart of Jesus, it changed my life. It's it's really transformed my life. There is one day I I was coming back from work tired because of the things that I do. Even though I still go back at 4:15, I arrive at 5, but I'm tired. <laughs> so I say to God, God, receive my suffering combined with your passion with Jesus passion and I started to pray for those who are suffering in their works and for this particular person then the next week no during that week I find out that this person actually just uh, received a job new job even though he is not searching for it 
This is the, the boldness approach that we can even ask God. It is through my little suffering, offered it up to Jesus, and God gives mercifully, and God gives abundantly. There are a lot of other experiences, one more experience that I share. I actually, uh, one day, I offer up uh, my daily suffering to God, and I say that, uh, please, I pray for the unity of my team in work at work because I felt that a lot of uh, uh, friction from the managers to the plant managers and all these things and you know what happened the next day in the morning the next day in the morning my plant manager, manager gathered us then he said I have just submitted my resignation letter <laughs> <laughs> but uh, to continue the story but he said the managing director uh, rejects it but then he then uh, tell all of the things that make him to, wanted to quit the job, to resign from the job. And it's actually all the friction that is happening. So while he uh, uh, saying all of these things, eventually we can have the heart-to-heart -heart talk between in our team and it really unites our team. My life become more colorful. <laughs> With all of this consoling heart of Jesus. Well, this is still considered as the consoling the heart of Jesus. Because the second stage of the consoling heart of Jesus, we console the body of Christ, which is the church of the people around us. My life become more colorful with all of these things. A lot of experiences because of this request, this offering up of suffering. And the best part of this is that Sufferings normally for me, it will make me feel bitter. It will make me become more and more selfish, start to look into myself. But this approach of consoling the hearts of Jesus, it makes me more merciful. Every sufferings I offer it up for other people with boldness and with trust in Jesus. And therefore, uh, the divine mercy, you see that. God is very willingly to give the grace to us. That's why you see <coughs> one of the foot, sorry, one of the feet uh, step forward who wanted to embrace us. And the, the race of mercy coming from the side has come to us and approached us. And what we need to do to get this mercy is written below. To just say that Jesus, I trust in you. So <coughs> I have this now. I have this habit every 3 p.m., which is the hour, uh, the defined hour when Jesus was crucified and died. I offer up my suffering, unites with the suffering of Jesus. I put an alarm clock on my phone, so every time it will ring by 3 p.m., then I will pray. It's a simple. I, it's just a short prayer, and I just re remember my suffering, and I said I unite this suffering. Uh, with your suffering and I will I offer it up for an intention and every day I have an intention that I offer it up so we can do that as well and we will become more and more merciful we can start to pray for MS people that cannot come we can start to pray for uh, the people the, the bombing victims the killing victims the shooting victims we can offer up for people close to us be bold to trust Jesus and be bold to make that, uh, that intention. So, I have been mentioning about the three response that you will understand, but I have never thought about that. So, in the, at the end of this teaching, which is now, <laughs> I will talk about the three response, the common response that we say that, that makes us uh, what, what the first response is that be grateful, the second response is that everything will be good at the end of it and the third response is just offer it up to Jesus and actually if we see these three response it is what is being inside of my teaching as well it is the stages of how we respond to our suffering but a lot of times we say this or we receive these comments from other people when we are still in the retaliation phase and that's why we want to mock people and God gives a picture for us to mock them. <laughs> because of this 
uh, best suffering. That's why when you suffer or when you see people that are suffering, the first thing is that we need to let them listen to themselves. We need to make them feel listened to. Because acknowledge their feelings, acknowledge their suffering. Because that will make them understand, yeah, I'm suffering because of actually because of this. When they start to share, they are aware of what they are suffering from. Once they have listened to their suffering enough, then you can uh, bring them to to find the meaning, to console the heart of Jesus. So just uh, what a, a summary, the first thing is that we need to listen, listen when we are at the uh, retaliation phase. The second stage is that we need to find meaning and ask for the grace. When we uh, ask for the grace with trust, we will be able to be grateful because we have received the grace. We will be able to see hope at the end of it because we trust in Jesus. And how we do that? It is through the consoling the hearts of Jesus. And the third stage is that we embrace the suffering because we can offer it up for other people's sake. And from this, um, we unite our suffering with Jesus and be able to make that uh, intention for others. And it changed us from looking inwards to ourselves only towards being merciful for others because we offer up our suffering for the sake of others. So, I like to conclude this with uh, the, the saying from the Saint John Paul the uh, Saint John Paul the Great. He said, "Don't waste your suffering. From your suffering, you can choose to listen to yourself, grow deeper to the knowledge of yourself, know what are the things that you need to grow. We can use our suffering." to deepen our relationship with Jesus, to console the heart of Jesus, and we can use our suffering to be merciful for others. So don't waste your suffering and choose to console the heart of Jesus. Thank you.